Kings of War 3rd Edition Battle Report, where I face Australia's number one player, Jeff Trage, piloting the forces of nature. Don't go anywhere. Hello there. I like to watch battle reports to get better at games. So I started making short, summarized battle reports that focus on learning points. So welcome to my channel, Newbie Dice. Do like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon if you enjoy my videos. So this is my fifth game facing off with Jeff Trash. Uh, if you guys have been keeping score, we have uh, the, the, the score has been 1-1 one, one, and 2. That means uh, we each won one game and we tied twice. So this is the fifth game. This game was played all the way in uh, June 2020. So I have uh, quite a big backlog of uh, games to actually make battle report out of. Then, then I realized uh, Hellpiece Rift is releasing and with that comes COP 2021. And that also means that uh, may, most likely people will not be interested uh, with older battle reports with, with, without the latest changes, right? So let's see how this game goes down. Firstly, I'm taking the forces of the abyss. So at this period of time, I was uh, experimenting with playing forces of the abyss. So I do have uh, low abyssals and where I use two-handed weapons and sacrificial imps and healing brews, uh, extra five points. Abyssal Ghouls are good uh, chaff units. They are 14-16 nerf with uh, defense 4 and at 90 points they unlock as well. So I do have uh, two Gargoyles, uh, kind of standard, two Regiment of Abyssal Horsemen. So one with Raw Sharpness and one with Boots of Shriding, a Regiment of Tortured Souls. I kind of think Tortured Souls are not bad but <laughs> can't seem to find a very good success with it. A horde of Morlocks. Uh, Morlocks, not a lot of people love them because their defense falls, so I only want to take one because they are hordes, right? So they do unlock uh, a lot of stuff. So with that, I took three Abyssal Warlocks, one of them with Bane Chant, and uh, one Halloween Blood Mask with a Blade of Slashing and the Manifestation of Bale. Now let's look at Jeff's list. Uh, straight up, you'll see three hordes of Salamander Primes. And you'll see further down, he has the Salamander Veteran with the Guiding Flame. I think he wants to make use, abuse that melee aura for Salamanders. I think it's quite uh, points efficient if they all get elite. So with that, he has uh, um, Centaurs, Centaur Bridge Riders, that's the melee Centaurs. Two Greater Air Elementals with Lightning Bolts, a Forest Warden with Inspiring, three Herder with Blade of Slashing, and a Unicorn summing lightning bolt and he brought allies so with allies he brought just a regiment of ghouls and uh, one warlock so let's look at the deployment and the, we're playing plunder so plunder is the five loot tokens in the middle and each of us choose one of them to become worthing uh, to be worth two points so the ones that are worth two points are the two in the, with the black and white flag okay so one in the middle and one on the right so Jeff uh, deploys first, that also means he chooses the side, so he chose the bottom. And straight up, the numbers you see are actually the deployment order that we're deploying in. So if you notice, for myself, I drop the gargoyles. I tend to be afraid that the gargoyles get shot off, so I put them behind this uh, terrain, the obstructing terrain in the forest, so that hopefully it's uh, can't be seen or at least very difficult too. So this gargoyles behind the rock still can be seen from an uh, extreme angle, right? Because the greater earth elementals are able to see through all other units to be able to see the gargoyles and shoot at them if he wants to. So with that, you can see that he's uh, heavily positioned on the right side with the two hordes of salamanders. And we'll see how that goes. So I don't know who won the roll off, but uh, either way, I like to go first and Jeff likes to go second. So we both get what we want. So first off, I already moved uh, my tortured souls up to be ready. I, I think I picked up the token immediately. Okay. And straight off the bat, uh, my manifestation of build lightning bolt, and I think I wavered the warlock straight up. Okay. I used the marker to mark the parameter of the hill so that we can tell very easily whether we are on or off the hill. So if you look at the warlocks that I have, one of them is red, that is the one with Bane Chant. So I pretty much uh, moved up cautiously. I'm still keeping my gargoyles back because he does have lightning bolts. 
uh, from the unicorn, the two air elementals, and uh, the warlock can shoot, but he's uh, this um, I mean wavered right now. So let's see what he does. So on the left, he backs up, right. The air, air elemental stays behind the forest, but uh, guarding the left side. And the middle and the right side advance because he does have two, the blocks of salamander, so it moved up to three herder with defense six. It's not afraid. Moved all the way up with the terrain uh, with water, making my charges hindered. So let's see what I did. So I continued to position. Notice now my warlock picked up the second token on the left as well. So I don't, I don't know. I think we're both deployed quite lightly on the left, but uh, he has less. So I'm able to pick up the two tokens. And I think the greater earth ele uh, air elemental did lightning bolt and dealt two wounds to my tortured souls. So let's see what else happened more shuffling around right this is the top of two and so at the bottom of two let's see the the, the left side so the goose did uh, move up further this time to uh towards the fence okay i think i'm backed up so i think two rounds of lightning bolt killed off the warlock over here okay so bottom of two moved up on the fence, uh, baiting me to charge him, okay? But I'm not, so what I did was, I already have the token, I don't need to win this. I thought that, okay, I'll just keep backing up, I'll get into terrain, it'll be hard for him to kill me off. Okay, and so, bottom of two, so that's my opponent's turn, Jeff's turn. So he continued to position upwards. Key thing was the air elemental is now coming to support the middle with the forest blocking line of sight, so my bail couldn't charge it, right? So the unicorn, his unicorn charged in, used it as chaff, charged into my abyssal horseman. This is the one with the J boots and wavered it. So the skull means waver. Okay, so let's see what happened in my response. So firstly, he, he put this unit of salamanders up. He chaffed one of my horsemen. So I'm only left with the other horseman. Okay, the ghouls are able to charge into the salamanders flank. So I think I sent the ghouls into the flank, the warlock into the flank as well, right? And these uh, sharpness, sharpness, uh, horsemen in the front, and I think I uh, aided with Bane Chant, so that took off the salamanders. I think I needed slightly above average rolls, and I got it. So that's the first thing. Notice in the center, I have moved up to pick up the token in the middle, okay? and. What else? So I used the gargoyles to chaff up the tree herder so that he couldn't uh, punch himself in because the tree herder is a little bit hard to take out. Okay, so uh, key thing to take note is that I left the flank open. I did not see this. The earth and the air greater air elemental I think could charge into the flank of the lower abyssals. So that's what happened in the next round. So air elemental in the flank, Santos uh, in the front, took a lot of damage and I got wavered and I think I was lucky. I think I should have died, but uh, only got a waver. So th in this game, right, I, I was very lucky and Jeff was very unlucky in the early game, right? And let me rewind that. So notice in this previous round, I placed this, uh, this the, uh, what do you call this, bail on the side to threaten the flank of the salamanders and all the way until this point I did not realize that the I, I didn't it did not occur to me that the air elementals the greater air elementals could surge into my flank right so actually the greater air elemental here could move 10 with a nimble turn around and be surged into the flank the forest warden has surged okay the tree other also has surged but this guy got disordered right so uh, if he wasn't disordered, I think he could have flank charged the stuff here as well. And so that's what he did. So firstly, I was very lucky to take out the element the horde, okay? And then this, this thing was very lucky to survive the lower abyssals. And then he moved, to, that's what he did. He moved his critical air elemental to be searched one inch into the flank of Bale with search 4 and he failed it. So it was like, wow! 
one one shot of good luck and two doses of bad luck for him and <laughs> seems like everything's crumbling for him so things are going pretty well on my side so he chaffed up the he chaffed on the right side right he chaffed up the horseman with a salamander prime while his salamanders took out the warlock that i used as chaff yeah so but i do still have ghouls to send in as chaff but at the same time his tree herder has freed himself up after killing off the gargoyles but i do have one blood mask here and the other unit of abyssal horseman so let's see what happens right i think with this probably i could still get the angle let's let's go from left to right first all right so firstly top of four i moved my i moved my this uh tortured souls back so it's been waving backwards and now it's in the terrain so when he charged me you get hindered and then when I hit back, I have life leech too. I'm most likely going to heal all my wounds back and I will be able to grind it out because I have healing and he doesn't. So over here on in the forest, what I did, let's rewind. So he failed his uh, search into me. So then I was worried about search as well and the greater air elemental. So what I did was I sent the gargoyles in to do some damage and ground the air elementals. But at the same time, they uh, moved over here out of line of sight of everything. I'm still afraid of search. So I did this uh, cool ability it is the, from the pit I curse T. That's the special ability of Bale, which basically is a pulse of disordering. So that would uh, disorder both the air elemental and the forest warden. So the forest warden couldn't cast search. The air elemental would be disabled, uh, disordered in case the gargoyles didn't wound it because the gargoyles are hitting on four and then with the forest they're hitting on five, right? So that was what I did. Uh, it was pretty cool because it's very seldom that you get to use this ability because it is a shooting ability. That means you can't use it when you move more than 10 inches. So it's very hard to use that ability. Now, the mistake I made was this. I, Whatever I did, so I was like, I'm going to put the gargoyles in and whether the gargoyles would or not, I'm going to ground it with my special abilities. Could, could only fight against the gargoyles, right? But I forgot to position. I did not position an extra unit to charge into the air elementals the next round so i it was i was so excited to use the ability and i i was like oh this is something cool i'm gonna pull off and i totally forgot uh it did not occur to me to plant an extra unit to take out the air elemental next round the monologue is here let's rewind and see what the monologue took out the previous turn it kind of flank charged the centaurs to take it out and i think uh my lower abyssals uh counter charged the air elemental together with the uh, Black Mask took it out. I think uh, a little bit of Lucky Dice there probably as well. I don't have the stats with me right now how much it is to take out the Air Elemental. Now, unlucky on this side though. So I double charged the the two horsemen into the tree herder and it, it survived. Wow. Uh, I'm not going to calculate the math at this point, but it's pretty cool that it survived. At this point, if you notice, I took one, two, three, four. I have four out of the five tokens. And seemed pretty strong at this point so what happens next so i guess i could still charge the tree herder even though i got chaffed up by the salamander prime uh, probably bounced back and still was able to get in so the ghouls chaffed up the salamanders so next in his response let's see from left to right right so from left his ghouls finally charged into me dealt zero damage because I, I had this two from an earlier lightning bolt right that was zero damage to me and i'm gonna say okay i'm gonna grind this out and i'm gonna win this very easily because uh, nine attacks hits on four wounds on trees i'm most likely gonna deal two to three wounds that means i'll heal, heal that two wounds back and when he hits me he deals two wounds on average and i have life leech too so so that's why i thought uh, this token is secured right and then um what he did over here he, counter charge the gargoyles and wavered it that's the skull over here and this maneuver is pretty cool he put this uh this uh what do you call this the forest warden at this edge so that when the salamanders charge it doesn't get hindered by the terrain so you, you, it's kind of a known trick you use a supporting character to block off the landing zone on inside terrain so that when your salamanders charge it is not hindered so 20 25 attacks so 12 should hit um 10 Eight, eight wounds so it dealt nine and wavered it uh not too worried about waver because uh my 
abyss has fury, which is a pretty solid rule, right? So this uh, warlock over here, he picked up the token somewhere here on, on in front of the rocks, right? And then it's, he has been walking slowly and steadily towards this side. So it's uh, aiming to be like sandwiched by the unit so that it's protected. Okay, and what else happened here? All right, this is the opponent's turn. So the tree herder counter charged that unit of abyssal horsemen together with the salamander veteran, I think he, it, tell, it took two damage earlier, but now with this combined charge, it took it out. The salamanders previously got chaffed up by the ghoul, so it took out the ghouls, and now it's facing. So he's winning the right flank with just the salamanders and this tree herder, right? So let's see the top of my turn. Five. It's at five already. So take note of this. Um, top of five, my tortured souls counter charge, but I only dealt one wound, so I only heal one back, right? So let's look over here. So my gargoyles were uh, were wavered. So what it did is reform it face upwards so that I could anticipate wherever the uh, greater earth elemental, uh, air elemental, sorry, would fly over and then I would charge it. So if it was taken out by, if it charged the gargoyles, I thought, okay, I will be able to charge with the Morlocks. I'll come back to this in a slight moment. So two big mistakes happened here. So let me rewind just to show you what's uh, going on. So I double charged my Morlocks and these uh, lower abyssals into the elementals, right? And then the Bale charged into Forest Warden in the rear to take it out. Okay, so in the reform, after uh, after all the combat started happening, then I realized this, my this uh, warlock that's carrying the token, the rear is being exposed to the air elemental. So I was deciding what to do about it. And on hindsight, I should have turned the warlocks to face the warlock. Okay, because this is what's going to happen. I'm going to draw it out. If the air elemental charge the warlock to take it out, it will be here. And if my Morlocks were facing upwards, I would kill it, right? And so if I face my Morlocks upward at this point, I'm exposing my rear to the air elemental. And if the air elemental charges the Morlocks rear, it will probably kill it. But at least my token would be safe, okay? At least my token would be safe. That is, uh, that is the thing. So I should have face my Morlock upwards instead of downwards, okay? my Right, so my token would have been safe and my bear would be able to charge the air elemental in return. So instead, I didn't want my Morlocks to die. So I faced it towards the air elemental instead. So I, I knew that I was giving him this token and I thought I still had time to retrieve it back. But actually, top of five, I only have one turn to get it back, right? So, um, the lower abyssals face this way because the tree herder is here. Uh, the lower abyssals and the horseman took out what's this in front. I think it was the salamander. So this this lower abyss, uh, horseman took out from the flank, right? Okay. So I position afterwards. I position to face the tree herder. Now this is another mistake I made. So notice this yellow line. This shows the front arc. I put the tree herder just within the front arc of. Uh, the tree herder is just within the front arc. And then I charge this uh, this solo hero in, the blood mask in. Then I did not realize that on his turn, he would withdraw. And with that one inch withdraw, he would be in my flank. And then he would be able to charge my flank. So that is what happened. He charged my flank of the uh, Abyssal Horseman together with the Salamander hero. And same thing, the Salamander hero plus the tree herder took out, took out the horsemen. So these two guys have taken out both units of horsemen by themselves, right? So let's rewind over here. Notice top of five, I did only one damage. And guess what? I don't know, don't remember how much damage he dealt, but he spiked the nerf roll and I have no inspiring, right? So just one spike will be enough. I think Tortured Souls are dash 14. If he dealt one wound or two wounds, he will need an 11 or 12. So he probably needed a 10, 11, or 12 if he dealt one, two, or three wounds to route, and he got it. So he got this token that I thought that I have in the bag. 
and the air elemental charged and took out this token that I thought I have in the bag, right? And then he took out the Abyssal Horseman that I thought I have in the bag. So suddenly in this turn, he took one, two, three tokens from me. It's just like, oh my goodness. And um, one, one lucky thing over here is that he charged the this uh, Salamanders into my uh, Horseman, this solo Horseman, but I think he just snaked it. So it held. So my Horseman is there to hold it for one more round. Anyway, I do have this Warlock over here. Warlock makes a great endgame chaff. So what I did was uh, the lower vessels plus the solo horseman charged into the tree herder and finally took it out. It's already, uh, it's, I think it's, uh, I can't tell for sure. I think it's at 11 wounds, right? Because it's 12 in the previous round. It has radiance of life. It's probably at 11 here. And I charged in and, and bear in mind, this is hindered. He's in the water. I probably wrote pretty well to take it out. Warlock is here to chaff up the Salamanders. Okay, let's look at over here, the Gargoyle and Bale charged into the air elemental and I did not take it out. So uh, that is possibly my last turn. I was hoping if I have a turn six, uh, turn seven, I should still get this token back. Okay, so that's uh, my uh, wish and hope would happen. And let's look at his turn. He took out uh, now, he did this, right? He countercharged the gargoyles and then he overran. So even if there was a turn seven, I had nothing that was able to look at the air elementals and, and charge it to take it out. Well, but do bear in mind now that I'm looking at it, my bail could have uh, lightning bolted and hope to do some wounds to take it out. Uh, so that's something that could be done. But alas, uh, it ended at the bottom of six. So he holds one, two, three token with this being worth two points for a total of four. And I hold one, two. So the, uh, the flag and one red icon counts as one of the tokens, right? So I hold two for a total of three. So it's four versus three. Quite a tight game, quite a lot of mistakes made. So let's look at the learning points. So firstly, remember uh, shambling and surge. No um, shambling. Well, it uh, shambling is. I, I did not remember shambling on the air elemental, so I should have uh, known that. But also, I thought that the greater elemental could fly 20 and turn. So, I was throughout the game, I was being very cagey in that front that I was afraid that he could fly 20 and position in a way that uh, threatens my flanks and rears. So, remember, so that's a good point and that's a bad point about shambling flyers, right? Next, uh, you can use terrain, uh, use units to block off terrain to prevent hindered charges. This is a pretty standard trick like this picture over here where Jeff used his forest warden to block off the charge of the salamander primes from being in the forest. So this is a mistake of mine. I should have always prepared a follow-up charge after grounding flyers. You have to have a plan and this is the, lo and behold, this is the greater air elemental that took the last token away from me. So I'm still beating myself up about it when I'm reviewing this game right now. So next, remember that uh, remember to know opponent's charge angles after the one inch withdraw. And that's talking about this tree hurdle over here that withdraw one inch and charge into my abyssal horseman's flank. Oh my goodness. Next, uh, this is talking about my ghouls, the ghouls versus my tortured souls on the top left. Well, without inspiring heat, one spiky nerf roll could just take out my unit, right? So lastly, don't be complacent. I wasn't complacent, but train the late game, right? So uh, a lot of times we have a very good idea of how to start the game. We push forward. We know how to push open up, you know, we know how our army forms up, how it moves forwards in the first couple of turns. And then after that, in the late game, where things get so messy, you kind of, uh, forgot or lose track of what needs, what's important, uh, what you need to take note of, lose track of angles, lose track of the opponent's tricks that they are swinging around to flank you. So I don't know how to do this, but there's a, more thought needs to be put into the late game as well. Lastly, sacrifice everything to win the scenario and count the turns. I thought that I could still have enough. 
I knew that I was giving the token away to the air elemental and I thought I still had enough time to take it out. So I should have counted the turns. I was like, oh, there's only one potential turn. Bill and actually I've calculated that Bill and Gargoyles wasn't enough to take it out. So I should have turned my Morlocks to face the Warlock. So I knew that with Morlocks and Bill, I'm most likely be able to take that token back. So with that, um, still beating up my beating myself up from it, I managed to get claim defeat in the jaws of victory, right? So things were going my way at the early game, and even though I missed out search, I was spared from it with uh, Jeff's poor dice rolls, four dice search, and failing to get a hit. And then I was lucky to kill off the first Salamander Prime Horde. And then my Lower Abyssal survived till the end of the game when he should have died to that initial flank plus front charge. So many things uh, were going in my favor at the start. And then at the back, missing out that bounce back and flank charge, plus the tortured souls that should have easily won that fight, uh, grind, win, win that grind, dying to a spike uh, nerf roll. So all those. Uh, really came back to bite me and well now I'm one down from Jeff and I hope that I'll be able to play him again very soon to settle the score. So right now it's one win, two losses and two draw. This is our current count uh, of me versus Jeff. And once again, if you enjoyed this battle report, do like, subscribe and hit the bell notification icon. Uh, you'll be uh, it means a great deal to me and I really appreciate it and I'll see you in the next video after Hellpiece Rift.